Hello, this is David Coyle, and welcome to the next video in our series, Analyzing Public Data Sets, an introduction to IGV cDNA. In a previous video, we generated three files shown here, taken from Galaxy. The first is a cDNA database that we used for our alignment, and the second and third are the BAM and BI files from the BWA alignment that we performed on Galaxy. What we're going to do today is use a genomics browser called IGV, which stands for Integrative Genomics Viewer, to actually visualize this alignment. To begin, let's get IGV. Open up a browser. We'll search for Integrative Genomics Viewer. And there it is. And over here on the left is Downloads. Uh, you may have to register for this site, but registration is free. Uh, IGV is a Java-based application, so you'll need to relaunch it from the website each time. Or you can download a shortcut to your toolbar, which will also relaunch the, the application. And for our purposes, the, the smallest launch, the, the smallest memory usage is fine. So we'll click on Launch and we'll go ahead and get this running. And this will take a couple minutes to load up. It will ask for access to your computer, which is fine, and we'll be back when it's ready to go. And here we are in IGV. Uh, by default, IGV opens the most recent version of the human genome, which is obviously not what we want. Um, there's a variety of genomes present in IGV, but we don't want to align our BAM and BI files to genomic DNA because we performed our alignment with cDNA. We want to visualize the alignment against the same cDNA database that we used on Galaxy. So to begin, we do File, Import Genome. And we'll give it a name, we'll just call it Rice, and then the file is this all cDNA. Go ahead and save this. And it's going to go ahead and import that as a genome. Okay, now you can see this is the rice cDNA, and here is the list of all of the cDNA. So we can scroll through and look at whatever cDNA we want. Uh, let's get the alignment in here. Go to File, Load from File, and here's we open the BAM file and it will automatically associate with the appropriate BI file. I should note here that if you don't use exactly the same cDNA or genomic sequence that you performed your alignment with, um, IGV is probably not going to work. If the if the file structure is not identical, uh, the, the genomics viewer is not going to be able to visualize your alignment. Let's go ahead and open rice.bam. And here it is. What you see here uh, up at the top is the cDNA. So it's a 3000 base cDNA with this location. And each of these boxes down here is a read from our Illumina run. And we can zoom in, and then we can drive around this alignment to wherever we'd like. And you can see that there are some arrows that point to the left, so those are reads found in the reverse orientation, and some arrows that point to the right, and those are reads found in the forward orientation. Uh, at the top here is a histogram of coverage. And this line in the middle shows where we are. So for example, this base is very well covered. A lot of reads covered that base. And you can see that the histogram is high at that position. And if we zoom in a little further, you can see a color representation of the bases at the bottom. And even further, and you can actually see the bases themselves. So you can see this position is a G in the cDNA and is a G in all of the reads. As one would expect in this case because this RNA-seq data is from the same genotype 
is a control condition as uh, the cDNA sequence was taken from. So other than looking at the pretty arrows and colors, what is it we might want to do with IgV? Well, one thing is just to examine coverage through a gene of interest. We can see that coverage in this region is reasonably good, and there's no coverage in this region. Another thing we can do with IgV is to visualize alternative splicing. We're not going to do that in this video because we've aligned here to cDNA. But in a subsequent video, we're going to align to genomic DNA where it's very easy to visualize alternative splicing. One thing we can do with this data set, however, is to look for SNPs, or base changes. So the fact that all of these are gray or white means that they're a perfect match. The entire read matches the underlying cDNA sequence. And we scroll around a little bit, we see some color, and that means that there's a change. And so right here, for example, this read has a C, where in fact there should be an A. And so the histogram shows 50% A, 50% C. Now this isn't actually a SNP because it occurs in only one of two reads and it occurs right at the beginning of a read. So this is probably a sequencing error. So what might a SNP actually look like? But rather than looking through hundreds of cDNAs for a good SNP, I've gone ahead and found a SNP already that's a good example. So we'll go ahead and take a look at that. go. We'll go ahead and zoom in a bit and scroll over. Right here. Zoom in all the way. One thing I should note is that these darker quality reads are higher quality reads and these lighter colored reads are lower quality. And so here you have a case where you have a large number of high quality reads that cover this position and a little over half of them have a G where in the reference sequence it was an A. So this is most likely a SNP and in fact this is exactly what heterozygosity would normally look like. About half the reads have a G, about half an, have an A. So you would expect in a heterozygote you got G from one parent, A from another parent. In fact, this particular data set is homozygous and is the same as the reference. So something like this is either residual heterozygosity, which is possible, or a gene duplication event where this gene has duplicated, but the sequence is so close that there are only a couple of small changes between the two versions, so they, they map to the same position. Regardless, for our purposes, this is if you were looking at your gene of interest, you, you would examine this further as a putative SNP. And that's all we're going to talk about in this video. In the next video, we're going to do a different kind of alignment where we're going to take RNA-seq data and we're going to align it to genomic DNA. And in a subsequent video, we're going to come back to IgV and we're going to see what RNA-seq reads look like aligned to genomic DNA instead of cDNA as in this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you then.